Hi, I'm Jonathan. Man, let Trader Breakdown time. Yeah, whoa. So, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoy my Trader Two reaction. Of course, which I put a lot of effort into because I was really passionate reacting to it. And you can say in my Trader reaction, you guys pretty much saw the scene where I say I'll be making a separate video talking about the trailer, basically going to each by scene that I pick by myself, where I you know dissect the scene, tell you guys what to know about it and what to expect from it, and of course you know just some hidden messages that you guys need to know. So yeah, you can say I am very much looking forward to go to you know each scene of the trailer. Trailer, just to see the it matches what I expect from when I literally read the light novel and most importantly whether the hype is real for this upcoming season of course I mean the hype is real obviously but you can say I'm expecting geek toys to really really adapt the right thing compared to Jason's staff of course so with that said let's just start with the breakdown shall we so we start with the first scene from the trailer where well Shido is falling from space with Mukuro so well, if you guys pretty much can read the scene, you can just tell the fact that, well, Shido somehow saved Mukuro. Or maybe Mukuro is doing like a tombstone power driver from space to Shido. Well, you can say from whatever you guys interpret the scene, from what I can say though, from without know, even like mentioning about the light novel, that Shido somehow managed to save Mukuro. You can see the fact that he's hugging her, like the hands like right there and stuff like that. So you can say this is like a post fight with Mukuro where Shido really found a way to like really, you know, help Mukuro to you know how to say save her from this sort of like path that she's going with so yeah you can say this is the scene where he's gonna start the trader I mean this is a really good scene by the way because you show how terrifying fighting in space can be I mean of course the animation of the the heat glowing them going near earth the gravity pulling them it's like really well animated by geek toys so I'll give them that of course but well from what I can see from this scene without even like you know spoiling you guys you guys can pretty much tell that you know Shido somehow managed to you know hold down to Mukuro to make sure that you know she is saved in this way so let's move on to the next scene right here and we got ourselves well you know Westgard the idiot well villain or whatever he came with dickhead you can call him that way well you can see he's in some sort of like a, a base where he's like on high alert you can say the the scene from the trailer you can see the the red light or the left flashing and stuff like that so you can interpret it as the way you know west got invaded somewhere invade, maybe invade the well maybe francis headquarters or something or maybe the ship or something like that so you can pretty much see the fact that he you know he managed to like find ways to sneak on board on the ship and try to do something maybe capture the spirit or maybe trying to like cause havoc around back you know west got to be more of a dickhead in the season four because you know in season three he pretty much shows not a lot of villainous from him though but i say in season four you're really gonna hate him a lot to be honest so this scene right here is very important because it's actually like a big Earning event for volume 14 actually this is the the start of what the event for volume 14 so that's all i need to say for you guys that this scene here is actually really important and westgar look at his face man all smiling and confident that he can do whatever he wants so you know he has a plan in mind with this case so let's move on to the next scene and of course best girl everyone absolute best girl and of course you can say i used her face for my discord profile picture so yeah you can say i love her so much man my girl kurumi you know how much i'm a kurumi fan i am i talk about her a lot if you know when she comes to the scene i can analyze her and her character design really resembles the one from diabolic because it's by the same studio after all but dude Big Toys are really, really, really respecting this anime, man. I was actually respecting this franchise, unlike Geishi staff, that didn't manage to make the face, man. Look at the smile on Kurumi's face, man. Like, holy shit. That is what you should say, a creepy yonder smile. And they did her justice, man. So I'm very happy that Geek Toys are really putting the effort into the animation, especially the whole animation of her collarbone right here. Like, holy shit. I wasn't expecting the collarbone to be that animated right there. And yeah, just another day I've seen my beautiful girl, Kurumi smiling of course you know from the background that she's in she's invading the some sort of facility by the dem i mean i mentioned this in my other breakdown video you know how what could be doing in the the base and stuff like that but it's basically the extension of the scene i mean basically you can say this is one of the clones going a rampage causing havoc killing of the scientists and stuff like that and you know why you guys are asking why is she doing all this because of this, guys, you can see from the shadows right there that those are Kurumi sh clones fighting. And right here, everyone, is Nia Honjo, the upcoming spirit. And you guys are wondering why is she captured and stripped naked? Well, it, well, you, knowing DM, what they do with spirits, you can either come with a conclusion without reading the light novel, of course, that she has been held hostage for research, being used to extract her, maybe her crystal inside of the Kudapriya crystal. 
or maybe you know taking uh t it's absorbing her spirit mana or she, you know in this case you know she, she need to hold, or even torture her by doing all those shit that i just mentioned it's quite a very painful scene i mean i was surprised that they actually animated the scene because in the light novel they would never really mention what Nia looks like in a facility like this. So I think Geek Choice is taking an extra step showing us what Nia is going through in this sort of captured facility. Yeah, I expect Nia to talk more about it in the upcoming season four because you can say Nia's situation that she's going through, it's actually really painful to watch, to be honest. Like the this amount of stuff that DM does to Nia, it's actually, how to say, punchable to Westgard. Like basically, if you want to see Westgard again, you want to punch him because what he's doing to Nia right now is absolutely unforgivable. We can see all these wires absorb, uh, no touch, uh, no sticking to her arm, her face, her eyes. And you basically can easily, you can come up with, come up with a theory that Nia is actually being tortured because like, what would they do with all this stuff attached to her? You know, electrocute her maybe. And even to the point of stripping her naked, that is unforgivable to be honest. So yeah, I gotta say, I'm very glad my girl Kurumi here is to save Nia. And of course, Kurumi is saving Nia for another reason, which, which I mentioned back in the breakdown of my first breakdown. You know, if you guys go back to season one and go back to season two, she pretty much give you guys a hint of what she's going to do with Nia, so yeah, let's just say Nia is basically the main focus for Kurumi, no rescue mission right now. So but my girl is here to do good things like, after all. So let's move on to the next scene. So you can see right here another scene with Kurumi. Uh, you can pretty much say this is a mission success, mission failure, or you can say Kurumi just you know look at the crash base, a destroyed base. You know either way she is going to invade the base anyways, and she's gonna you know cause havoc around the base. So. Yeah, basically she's looking at it. You can just see the background right from there. It's it's you know very isol isolated place, so you pretty much can tell the DM is working on something very top secret regarding spirits that you don't want any public to know about. Yeah, the background pretty much says that is in a very isolated place. I'm not gonna really mention where is it, but you can say it's so isolated that only it takes. A bit of information from Kurumi to know how to get there. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for those who got trapped in the fire, but still, man, they were working for DM, so it sucks to be them. So, yeah, as you can say, Kurumi is doing good things right here. And then now we move on to a brand new scene, a much more happier near Honjo. And you can see from behind that she's in Akihabara. I mean, the Akiha, what else you can say, Bara. So yeah, Akihabara. So, well, you guys know from the previous trailer that she draws manga. She has this sort of like otaku vibe to her. And the voice actor for her, I wish I mentioned during the reaction. Well, you can say I wasn't expecting her to be the voice actor for Nia. I was expecting someone else, if I had to be very honest, but hey, I mean, she works, I guess. I mean, like I said, Nia is more of this sort of like Baba sort of character. She is like a very, she talked like a very old lady, if you know what I mean. So uh, maybe choosing her voice actor for her is kind of makes sense to be honest. But again though, Nia, she looks more like a child based on appearance, but she's a lot older than you think she is. Yeah, going back to this scene right here, you can see that she's going to Akihabara for what reason? Maybe a stock on some manga, stock on some ma well, manga drawing equipment, or maybe buying some mangas or an buying some BD animes, or you know, just go here and just have some fun. And well, if you guys ask me why she's going by herself, well, she is technically well going with someone else which i'm not gonna really gonna go into but you can say he is the mc that's all i need to tell you guys so yeah i gotta say the way nia dressed up is so old-fashioned so very not fashionable to be honest which kind of shows a lot about her character that she's not really much of this sort of fashionable person she's more of this sort of like person just want to get things done quickly by wearing some random coat and stuff that i mean maybe she's also vulnerable to code too so that's why she's wearing this i mean i'm happy that she's happy i guess after what we saw from the previous scenes from the trailer so hopefully she have a fantastic time in akihabara and now we move on to another scene with nia and shido so pretty much the scene we saw from the first trailer that you know Nia transformed into her astral dress and this in this case you can say she is interpreting or should I say invest investigating or you can put it this way flirting with Shido. Well you can see from her get go that she's like you know going near Shido as telling her about herself maybe what she went through and what's her you know bet with Shido you know if you remember this Shido wants to go and seal her powers away and you know maybe like along the way she wants okay Shido you want to see my power you got prove to me that you're capable of seeing my powers 
In this case, she's challenging Shido, if you put it this way. If you saw from the previous anime season of Day Alive, you just know that there will be consequences for sealing spirits. And that's why they want to challenge Shido to see whether he's worthy of their kiss. Yeah, in this case though, Nia, you can see from her get-go from her design, that that's a fucking pen right there on her astral dress. That's the, 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 you know, the nun cloak right there. You can see that she's quite a, a weeb already, man. You no, know, the, the moment you, I saw this on her forehead, it's just like, okay. Seems like she is indeed an otaku. I mean, who puts a fucking pen in their astral dress? So yeah, you can say this scene right here. You expect a very fun scene with Nia, with Shido. Because, you know, Shido is basically shocked by Nia's, how do you say her, uh, how does her reaction to Shido, if you know what I mean. But with this case, though, I'm not going to say too much more. Let's move on. So we move on to Mukuro. So I so this will be the scene from Volume 14. And first off, wow, we got some CGI stuff going on here. So yeah, I gotta say, you know, Mukuro is, well, her design is based on what I saw from what I can imagine from my, you know, reading my light novel, that she is basically drifting in space. And you guys are wondering why is she drifting in space? Well, let's just say it all goes back to her past and how she, you know, suffered and she has some PTSD going on with her. So that's all I need to say. So yeah, basically you can see Mukuro is a space spirit. Yay, space. Hmm, not, I'm not going to say too much about this scene though because, you know, this scene pretty much speaks for itself. She just wants to be alone. She wants to be, you know, not to be disturbed. She just wants to go through this sort of like emotional state just to know um just to be a just you know have no one to disturb her because you know she's basically in pain well all i can say is that this scene right here expect a very tough situation for shido and the other spirits to deal with so and which can easily lead on to well of course natsume you, you guys are wondering why is she in her full astral dress and using and bringing her hanyu well either way you can say she's about to start fighting someone or you can say she's battle ready or Maybe she could be, you know, on a high alert on someone's approaching her. Well, in the, either way, she's got about to fight someone. And you can say the opponent she's going to fight is quite troublesome. And let's move on to the next scene, Origami. So in the first trailer, we haven't really saw Origami character design. And finally, we get to see the Origami character design. And she pretty much looks exactly how I imagine her to be. I mean, what else you want her to look like? And of course, you can say origami popularity has risen a lot because of, you know, Detective Never Die, or D D Just Die, or whatever the anime is called again. Oh my god, this has been a while since I watched the an anime. But anyhow, you can say, I am so looking forward to this scene. You can see uh, origami is on her new CR unit uh, suit. It's, well, you can say it's been um, not designed by the anti-spirit team, the AST. It's more so given to her by the Francis. Francis is supporting Origami because, you know, Origami, she does, she's not really much of a fan of using her spirit power. So you can say this scene right here, she using the Francis newly made um, CR unit for her to do some fighting in space. Whatever, wherever the fighting, well, who else? The DMs could be. So, or could be fighting Mukuro. Yay, we get to see Origami fight Mukuro. That would be very fun to watch. But you can say they are not alone. They are being attacked by DM. If you guys saw the trailer, you guys, I'm sure we're going to get into later. You know they are being attacked by DM anyways. And we're on to another character. And a lot of you guys will be asking me, uh, in the, who is this girl right here? Well, all I can say without much spoiler that she is a new villain for this series in question mark. Well, to be honest, the reason she got dragged into this situation is because of Westgard. And how do I put this though? She is going to be a lot of fan favorite to it. I mean, I have been hearing a lot of people excited to check or see her when, you know, the trailer came out. Of course, everyone was like, where, where is, where's Artemisia? By the way, that's her name, Artemisia. And you know, basing on her name, she's a foreigner anyways. And well, how do I put this though? She can be a very, very troublesome opponent. She is like... Ellen's level or it could be like a week a bit weaker than Ellen but she's like about her level you know if you can just base on this image right here with origami you know and of course you got artismisia in space too you, you can pretty much come to a conclusion that origami is fighting her so yay origami versus artemisia that should be a very fun watch i mean reading that scene in the light novel was really really gonna say it's gonna be one of the best fight scene in day of life season four so hopefully you guys are looking forward to it and hopefully geek toys does justice to the scene so 
Let's move on to the next one. And then we have the DM versus the Francis new ship, guys. I was actually surprised they actually showed this in the trailer because I, this is a big spoiler. Yeah, I gotta say though, that green ship right there is another is Ellen ship. And then we also see right there is the DM ship. And of course, you can tell which one is Francis because of the spirit tree. So yeah, that is Francis' new ship because you guys remember from season two, oh, you know, season three, that they got taken down by fucking origami inverse form. So yeah, you can say this is Francis' new ship. Looks really badass, by the way. Look like a butterfly, to be honest. Look like Mothra for some reason. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I really look, I really liking the new design from Francis, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this space fight because we're gonna have some interesting space battle. Oh man, I can't wait for that scene, Dean man. And then we have a cell Mukuro's, well, staff, her Michael, basically her, you know, weapon for her, you know, spirit. So, you know, her weapon looks like one of those, like, weapons you see from Journey to the West that Monk used, the uh, staff. So, here's a clear picture of what it looks like. It looks like a key, it looks like a key and she's going to stab at someone. And what she's stabbing at? One of the robots, of course. And you can see... It's quite like a key design right there. And you can pretty much say that her power, basing on her, on her weapon of choice, of course, or should I say her Han, her Michael. Well, you can say her wep her power is basically just key. Do what does key does to you? Unlock and lock. So, lock and, lo lock and roll. So, yeah. So, you can say she can unlock stuff. She can lock stuff. So, what can she do? What do you mean by unlock stuff and lock stuff? Well, you guys will find out because her power is actually really strong actually be a, a big big problem for shiro and the other to deal with especially the fact that you can actually one of her main power is teleportation through a portal and not just that the, the key uh, by michael key power is actually a lot more troublesome than you think it is and we will guys will see for yourself when it comes to uh, like the later half of season four so yeah i'm very much looking forward to seeing mukuro in action hopefully no cgi moment right here so Let's move on to this scene right here. And all I can say is that this is part of Mukuro's power. You can see the portal, the black hole. That is her power. She teleports herself through the portals. And she redirects the blast from maybe the from DM, from uh, one of the brands, uh, those brand robots and stuff like that. So yeah, looking forward to see how Mukuro fight in this scene right here. I mean, you can pretty much tell she's gonna, how she's going to fight, use a portal. And now we look at origami astro dress and dude she looks amazing in her astro dress man and of course now this time she's not like in this sort of state of wanting to kill spirit she's supporting spirit yeah she's still in space you can see the fact that she's going to use her astro dress to fight who well, guess who artist misia so yeah i'll be very much looking forward to this scene right here because you know this we i'm real very curious to see how does origami fight now you know her lost to her her anger her lust to kill spirit is now no more and now how will she fight will she still be the same origami fighting or will she be a completely new origami fighting that is all for us to see for this upcoming season four i'm not gonna say much more about it but looking forward to the scene of course and then we look at this scene right here where you know or the yamai sisters you get natsumi you also get i think you also get yoshino in the ship too and you can say they require their spirit mana to support francis in this way so that's all i can say you can see right here that you know no, the, the shining so he's basically absorbing the powers and then we have this uh, badass scene from Tolkien, my thumbnail for my pv2 reaction of course and you can tell from her background that she's in space and of course she's gonna help fight um whatever she's fighting maybe artist simicia maybe ellen maybe the dm ship and you can see how bad she is man i mean you guys saw from the trailer one talk was also in space in her astral dress so this could be one of the continuing scene from that so i gotta say the animation from this scene by geek toys is just mwah, oh spotless man oh absolutely clean this is a clean shot from talk man i love it so much so yeah let's just say this is pretty much it i want to cover from the trailer without much spoiler and i gotta say the, the amount of detail geek toys go into making it animating this scene right here i'm very very happy with it i gotta say and i'm very happy that geek toys are really putting a lot of effort to their life um, unlike jc jc staff of course the, the level of detail in the animation of this scene right here is enough to give me confidence that geek toys is going to deliver good justice to this anime so i'll be very much looking forward to season four when it comes in the spring season and of course hopefully we get another trailer where we hopefully get to hear the ending theme and of course the official proper specific release date for their season four with that said though hope you guys enjoy my 
my breakdown video to Daylight Trader 2. Of course, hope you guys enjoy my reaction to the Trader 2. And most importantly, hopefully you guys get to look forward to my reaction when the actual season 4 comes. Because I can tell you guys this, this is going to be my number one anime for next for this year already. So smash the like button and I'll see you guys then.